Leggings are notorious, dude. Throat <laughs> slashed. Whatever, dude. We got Artorius' armor. Drink up. I drink my milkshake. Yo! Just eat him! He's so weak! Oh, pray slaughter, dude. And the Xanthus overcoat. Ah, you let the real evil in! This is what Tomo looks like when I open a can of wet food. The second head is Ruka, yeah. Exactly. What? Blue Eye Orb? The Dark Moon Blade... Dark Moon Blade Covenant Ring? Watchtower Basement Key? Divine Ember? Thank God you're not a real blacksmith. we go from here I you know what I I actually I have a plan I think we go to Andre by the crest and go fight Sif killing Sif Or whatever is in Sif's place will give us the. You just stop. Will give us the Covenant of Artorius. No, no, wait. It'll give us the Abyss Ring. We can use the Abyss Ring to fight the Four Kings if we have to. We're just. We're just working through the flow chart. Why not get the Lord Vessel already? You haven't seen the Undead Parish in a while. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. As bad as the boss on the Undead Parish is... The, the run-up to the boss is absolutely good. No, the Abyss Ring is not randomized. I turned the setting off. Yes, you may take the Divine Ember. Are you sure that Andre has the Covenant? Yes. Don't, get yourself killed. Don't worry, you're in good hands. I understand the urge to give the driver instructions, but I'm driving from home to the grocery store right now. I know where I'm going. Oh, but uh, you could take a left... Uh, if you take a left earlier, you don't have to wait to go across the Canby Bridge. I like the Canby Bridge. It's got a nice view. Reminds me how lucky I am to live in a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. 
Excuse me, you have an item, sir? Can't really complain. What's on the docket for Tutty? As what a champ. What a champ, dude. Uh, as of now, still unknown. I deserve that. <clears throat> no, rest assured, I did... L oh, you know, fast travel. I did look at uh, PUBG, but it has maintenance. Because I was like, you know what? We could play PUBG, and Dan's not here. We could get Justin to join us, and it would be a fun little PUBG stream. But it's on maintenance. You guys were not randomized. Didn't you get the memo? We're randomizing. Is it not so that thou art thou that comest thee not for the great? My advice, the legend of Trevor, have thine own. Yes. Well, Let's I, go. I, can, what dost thou say? Uh, I will join you. I and. <laughs> And, yeah, don't skip his cuts. Excuse me! <laughs> take thee this ring. Giant leggings. It's not a key item anyway, whatever. But don't we have to wear it to not get attacked by all these individuals? Or does it just help us get summoned faster? Membership is enough. You love to see it. Chain away, have a good day. Traveling gloves. Please use big legs. <laughs> I gotta admit, I like it. Something about it. It's, it's physique goals. They do be looking kind of fresh, though. Okay, don't skip the cutscene. We've had so many easy bosses, to be honest. I know we're due for some kind of goddamn nightmare. Pinwheel would be hilarious. But honestly, I think this is a good fight for a large boss because the arena is so large. If it's Pinwheel, I think that's a wasted opportunity. I would love Pinwheel to be in, like, Capra's room. Um. Are you... It's Capra! I think it's Capra, dude! <laughs> that's not Capra! It's the Sanctuary Guardian! Drink up, boys. Tonight we dine in Valhalla. Same arena, lore fight. Okay, try hitting them. That's that's a problem. We did do pretty good damage, though. So this is a... It's a bit of a nasty one for me, um, because 
I've only fought this guy like once. But I think he's beatable. What if you have to fight Gaping Dragon in a small room? Well... The randomizer has a, uh, a checkbox. So it shouldn't be possible to fight a boss in a room where it's impossible to beat them. But that doesn't mean we couldn't have a very large boss in a room that's tinier than we'd like. God, I hate channelers, dude. For my randomizer, I have Gwyn in Capra's room. That sounds like an exciting fight. <laughs> You're like... It's like fighting them in a, in a phone booth. No! That's not so bad. Just staggered. Oh, when Ruka doesn't get the web food. Tail. I need a moment, please, sir. Oh, he got four, four attacks. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought, honestly, we died quickly, but we were doing okay there. I think this guy, though, we want to stand up at his face. Where are we at here? 330? I think there's a realistic chance we could beat this guy before 4. If you get down on me, I'll get down on you. Oh yeah. Since Dan is gone, y'all should play Tarkov. I'm here to let you know, if uh, uh, once Golden Goblet Tarkov is done, I'm uninstalling the game forever. I will, I will not play Tarkov ever again. I am having a miserable time. And I still have to record four more episodes of it. Yeah, we watch today's episodes. No, tomorrow's is worse. I'll just tell you what happens. So... Tomorrow is interchange. Fight him in the face. Tomorrow is interchange. I queue at the very, very start of the video. It takes 12 minutes for the queue to pop, despite it being one of the most popular games of 2020. Uh, I spawn in, loot a box, walk outside, loot a duffel bag, and then just get obliterated by a ninja turtle incredible a lot of fun now I don't have to watch I would rather you didn't <laughs> I am I am publishing the videos out of Respect for my colleagues who are also putting the work in. I should have... I I wish I had vetoed Tarkov. But at the time, I was riding high on the dopamine. I was like, Golden Goblet is going to be a... Uh, it's going to be fun no matter what. 
Dan pitched it, and I went, sure, sounds like a good time. And then, like, video one was whatever, video two was horrible, and video three was pure misery. So I'm like... I'm, I'm only mad at myself, really. Is this how Dan felt about Spelunky? See, that's, I, that's a non-issue. Dan was playing Spelunky in his off time. Golden Goblin just sold my god. Just repackaged it. I was not playing Tarkov in my downtime. In fact, I hadn't played it since uh, the update came out, like, 11 weeks ago. <clears throat> but in, in four days, the Tarkov Golden Goblet is, is done. I just, like, I have to draw the line in the sand. I'm not, for no more collaborative projects will I play Tarkov. It's like oil and vinegar. And I think the other thing that, and I'm talking inside baseball and even, like, just complaining a little bit, which is unbecoming of me. But I think that Tarkov, being the second game, has given people the idea that, like, um, that the purpose of Golden Goblet is to, like, well, mouth pick Spelunky. And then uh, Dan picked Tarkov so he could get some wins. And then NL is going to pick a game that he's really good at. And I think it's given people, some people, like the wrong idea that the purpose of this, this series is to get as many wins as possible. But like the purpose of the series is just to be entertaining. Which is why people are like... I was kind of losing it in the YouTube comments last night. Don't do it, don't do it. Because someone was like, I knew it! Isaac's going to be next. And I'm like, absolutely not. We have played enough Isaac for 10 lifetimes. And then somebody replied to my comment saying, absolutely not. And it's like, I'm betting on Tetris. And I'm like, you think I would, I would do that to my friends? I would be like... Well, I just suffered through Tarkov, so now, as punishment for that, I get to win seven games in, of Tetris in a row. Of course I wouldn't do that. It's just bad entertainment. Look at Big Ego over here. It's not Big Ego. I would win seven Tetris games in a row. Easily. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen Malf play a game of Tetris for one but I've seen Dan play about 500 easily is big ego is actually not though it would it would be extremely easy it wouldn't even there would be probably no moments where it was ever in question across seven days there's like almost no games I would say that about. Tetris is definitely one of them. Okay, we're not getting hit here. He's still lightning! Oh my god! Just, just, just do it, dude. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know what we're gonna play next. We'll see, uh... We'll see how people feel at the end of Tarkov, but... It's like the same with Hades. I don't want to do like seven. I don't want to just pick a game to win, because I think that's incredibly... I mean, I think it's idiotic. <laughs> to, to be as impolite, but as frank as possible. I'm like, who cares? It's like a tournament for fun. Let's do seven Isaac runs. No, thank you.
But certainly, you know, I ho I haven't watched any of the other videos because I don't even find Tarkov like fun to watch. Um, but like, I hope that the other dudes are having fun. Because if nobody's having fun, then this is a this is a learning experience. I just recorded my run. Oh no. I think Malv's having fun. <clears throat> I am I am miserable though. Especially like the the cust like shoreline and interchange and factory. Whatever. Like at least I know where the exits are. If I get yeeted, it's like it's my fault. But like customs, when I was like, I don't know where I am, I have to pull up the map, the maps in Cyrillic. And I'm like, oh, I'm near the power lines looking at a smokestack. And I'm like, I just... Just want to die. <laughs> So, so for the remainder of Golden Goblet, I would, uh, I would just suggest you, you watch Mouth and Dan, and you could just click the like button on mine and close the tab. That, I would consider that acceptable. I mean, you can watch if you and the literally so like the 12 minute queue of interchange like is just me looking at stuff on my desk like at one point you know i'm like hey check it out on my desk i got like some hockey cards that kate and i were given last time we went to the canucks games i was like oh look at that that's an elias Pettersson one you should save that that could be worth something someday that's that's the con that's where i'm at and that's that's what i've realized oh don't stand in the mist brother so what I've realized is, is that's my only course of action in the series at this point. <clears throat> Why didn't you just start the recording when you got in the game? Well, because then it would be like two minutes long. Like... You, I'm kind of like damned if I do and damned if I don't to some extent. At least you haven't missed a daily yet. That's true. I will at least not have any DNFs is... Uh Is, is basically the best I could do. Look, okay, I'm not... Yes, okay? I should just be playing Tarkov with a smile on my face. I agree. But don't compare it to Dan playing Spelunky. Dan was already... He's still playing Spelunky in his off time. It's not like me and Malf cornered him in the cafeteria and we're like, Hey, nerd, play Spelunky with us. We want to beat somebody up. He was already... He's still playing it. Okay, okay. No, it's a terrible start. I don't even mind, like... Here's the thing. I, I, I'm gonna take it not that this is a bad faith argument from people, even though I think it totally is. Um, and I'm gonna instead empathize. I think what I have a communication problem... And that has led people to believe that I am being salty at Tarkov because I'm losing. I'm not salty at Tarkov because I'm losing. Like, I would be totally fine to lose in Tarkov if I were just having any fun at all, is really what it comes down to. And the thing for me is always like, and I'm working on it. But, like, my performance is irrelevant to me. But the most, like, depressing feeling is, like, oh, I just spent, like, 
45 minutes making a video and the video sucks. Like, there's no entertainment value in it whatsoever. So I'm trying to get over that by putting, uh, you know, clips of uh, hockey cards. Come on! But we're working on it. Or I'm working on it. I don't know. It's only seven days. Hopefully this is just one of those situations that happens, uh, no, fairly frequently, where I'm, like, miserable, but it's at least the kind of misery that people find entertaining. Please do the attack where you go up on your hind legs. We can get this. Like, the thing is... I know you're like, the first video was good. I know. The first video is probably five times more entertaining than any of the videos that follow. I don't know. There's still four, five, six, and seven, so you never know. But unfortunately, two of the three maps I actually know have already been uh, recorded. And the only one left is Factory, which is a wild card to begin with. Yeah, I'm getting like a lot of tips and like, you know, you could just watch this streamer and you'll you'll get some advice, but like I'm here to tell you, it's like, in four days, it's getting deleted off the solid state, moved to the hard disk, and then deleted off the hard disk. I'm not supposed to stand in the back. <laughs> like there was a time where I think it would have worked and this is not it's me like this is not a problem with Tarkov it's a problem with me if we had done this in July 2019 I would have been all in I think I would have had a lot of fun but like Two things have happened in combination. It's been nine months since I cared about the game at all. Uh, and I've forgotten a lot of the stuff that is, you know, relevant. And the game has gotten much, 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 much more popular. I don't know how... We must be, like, pretty decently in, like, post-wipe as well. Because, like... I think I got killed by the scav boss on shoreline once. I got killed by a PM. Sorry, that was on um, customs. And then I got I got killed by a PMC on shoreline and the PMC on uh, interchange. The interchange one is the one that was annoying for me, just because literally I waited. Don't let him hit you with the tail. I literally spawned, looted two things, and then, like, just start to hear the, the grenades coming for you. I, I believe, I know this sounds crazy. We're gonna get this guy. How did popularity ruin it? Well, I think, like, I, I don't mean that it ruined it. I don't think the game is worse. I just think the players are better because they're playing more and there's more of them. Hey chat, Goo Goo Gaga, I'm one year old. Dan said in his video scores would be raw loot value. 
is correct. I believe... I mean, I'm telling you, I'm at, I'm at zero, zero, zero right now. So I haven't had to worry about it too much. But I believe it is... It is loot value only. I did see uh, Kate's flag bearer in stream, Captain. I'm stoked. Oh, let me go, please. It's the perfect space. No, 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 no. Roll if you want to. Roll around the world. That's not true. You had an M4A1 in your alpha kit. Uh, yeah, but that wasn't on the scav run. He's doing it. I'm learning. I think our best bet is a lot of dodging. Try to bait out the hind legs attack. Go around him. Land one to two shots, rinse and repeat. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe we should medium roll on this one. This, this one strikes me as maybe a medium roll situation. We can still fast roll with the <laughs> with the little Nas X on. Anyway, basically, I'm taking this opportunity to vent, and then hopefully the Tarkov videos like won't be so salty. But then I remembered that, like, whenever you try to have a serious conversation of, of any kind of level of decorum with Twitch chat, like, 95% of people are, like, totally fine. But then 5% of people are like, I get it. I don't like things that I'm bad at either. And I'm like, no, it's not really like that. And I try to, like, talk to you like an adult. And then instead, uh, you just met with bad faith arguments over and over. So you clap back slightly, and then there's ten threads on the subreddit that's like, Does anyone else think NL's been toxic lately? All I said was, looks like your cut's not going that well. And he had the audacity to act like it was some kind of personal attack. Yo, I like when you get wedged on the rocks. Okay. Hind legs? Hind legs! Get it out of here. I, I went for two hits. I know I shouldn't have. But I'm gonna do it again. Get that stam. Bait it. Let's go! Okay, now run. I mean, this is skill, right? This is, we've come up with a completely new strategy. Okay, just run. Oh, we lived. <laughs> we can do it. We just got to get... It's punch out. We've just got to get that attack right every single time. Once the algorithm failed, I lost it. 
A few more tries, we got it. Apollo finished his randomizer. I saw. I understand the purpose of, of that comment is not to say congratulations to Apollo. Instead, it's to try to rub in some salt based on the fact that uh, I am not finished my randomizer. But I have nothing but love for, for him and his Dark Souls randomizer skills. Moreover, this playthrough would not have existed were it not for him playing through the randomizer and being uh, one of two soul streamers on this whole platform that is actually fun to watch when they play these games. So, I think we gotta give Apollo a lot of credit, to be honest. Were it not for Apollo, this, this playthrough would not exist. The other one is Daniel. That being said, I've never watched anybody else play any Souls games on Twitch. No, no. Can I just go like a millisecond without being inundated by lightning bolts? Okay, okay. Hey! No. <laughs> he had me under control from the very start. <clears throat> Did you see that Dan is at over 150 tries on Orphan of Koss? I have. I have. Um, you gotta give Dan credit for keeping his head in the game. That's, I, I've said that for a long time. Those games, like Bloodborne, Dark Souls, they're not actually, like, hard. In the sense that, like, it's not hard to derive how you do something. Um, what's hard is keeping your head screwed on straight. Through the variable number of attempts that it's going to take you. Like a lot of people, I'm not going to name any names... A lot of people might get to, like, the final boss of a hard game, fight it, you know, for a, an hour or two, and then be like, nah, dude, I've decided this game is bad. I'm not going to play it anymore. Dan's just, he's cut from a different clock. Oh, come on! I got pre-fired. <laughs> like, that's a, that's what annoys me. Is like... In Tarkov, I die and I'm like, well, I'll see you next time. In Dark Souls, I die and I'm like, this is great. Like, I'm getting my ass beat and I'm having a great time. This is this is a fun way to lose. What enemy is in Sif's uh, place? Boy, you're in for a treat. Sif, but horny. That's why I was always bad as a kid. I'm with you. As a, as a kid, I would like get to a boss in a video game. Die four times and be like, game sucks. I'm just going to play NHL 98 and uh, win every match. That was a little close. Hind legs. Hind legs! Hind legs! It's like a Crash Bandicoot boss fight. I hate you. 
heal up twice. That's that's a double drink. Okay, that's a single drink now. At least we recovered at least. Gotta stop jumping. I panic. I panic and I I jump when I should just be rolling. Holding block will prevent you from jumping while running. Yo, incredible advice. Does it drain Stam faster? Does not appear so. Are the Canucks winning the cup this year? Probably not. Like, I, w I would give them, like, probably, like, under a 5% chance. But if you make the playoffs, anything can happen. It's been a, it's been a killer season already. Like, this has been by far the, pardon me, the best season in, like, the last six years. Canucks fans are stoked. Will they win the West? Well, not on standings. Um, the entire Central Division is way too good. Could they win the West in the playoffs? Probably not. Like, you would think uh, that certainly St. Louis, Colorado, maybe even Dallas are like better teams. And then, you know, any team can win. So even the teams that Vancouver would have a good chance against, you know, in seven games, anything could happen. So I think the odds are bad, but certainly substantially better than they've been at any point in a long time. The entire... Okay, yes, Minnesota, Chicago suck. And Winnipeg, no offense, Mouth. When I said the entire Central Division, I meant the part of the Central Division that matters. Colorado, St. Louis, Dallas... I'm green. That's green. I also think, and I've, I haven't said this in a long time, I think the Canucks are a little overrated right now. They're on like a very unsustainable streak. They've won like 15 of their last 18 or something. That's a new one. So inevitably, you know, they're gonna regress to the mean at some point, whatever their mean actually is. And then it's gonna be a little spicier, but. The Jets beat them the last 10 times they've played. That's true. That is, that is not false. We also lost two games to New Jersey this year and we only play them twice. So, you know. So Melf, all you gotta do is make it to the playoffs, which as of right now, Money Puck has you guys at an 18% chance. And then if you play us, you're clear. Forehead. I'm gonna get greedy. I'm gonna go for a two tap. I I didn't press the button. Money puck is flawed. I don't know. Is it flawed because it takes a look at the standings? This is a one tapper. Just kidding. It's just flawed. Extreme forehead energy. Just keep thinking about hockey. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been loving the 
Canucks, uh, like, watching the games has been very nice for, like, a couple of months because it feels like they always are in the game, even if they uh, let in the first couple goals. Which is a very foreign feeling, having watched almost all their games over the past, like, five seasons. I thought you were doing the hind legs attack. This is a heal opportunity. He's done it. <clears throat> the Covenant of Artorius. That was, that was a solid fight. That was a fight that I can be a little proud of. But eventually, and I hate to say it, but eventually the Canucks are going to regress to whatever their actual skill level is. Like, they're not going to keep getting 92% of their points. Oh, thank you, Crack Dota, for the uh, gift subs. Much appreciated. And that'll be interesting to see. 100% I will go see at least one playoff game if they made it. I mean, I went and saw... Um, I saw game one against Calgary in 2015. It was a long time ago. Thank you for the, the compliments. Much appreciated. Thirty-two strength. We have twenty-four. Yo! He can do it. All right, it's four oh four. Malf, we gotta figure out what the heck we're, uh, what the heck we're doing for Unity. Oh, bad start. I can't remember whether it was you or Apollo who said what they said about Ticket to Ride, but I agree 100%. I think Ticket to, the, the keg is almost out on Ticket to Ride. We need to wait for another shipment. And then, uh, for the king, uh, don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun, but Apollo is like, to beat for the king takes minimum eight hours, and realistically, not gonna happen. We're not gonna do an eight-hour stream, and we're... Like, sure, we could uh, boot up the file the next time we uh, didn't have one of us there. But it's like, it's a little weird. That could be like three months from now. Well, we got one more chance to make this happen. But to be honest, we need to not use the halberd. Because we have to have the Sestus to parry Gwyn. <laughs> I can't believe for, for all we've done so far, we still don't have a single uh, good shield. Well, I guess, like, I don't know. Depends on your perspective of the crystal shield. Or whatever it's called. But, uh... It's not good for, for, for parry purposes. Purple moss clump. Alright, alright. So here's what you do. You go, hello, boys. Great throw. 
Now, after nine enemies run down... You sprint up, and it's a very large rat indeed. And it's the Butcher, yet again. That's like Butcher 20. Drink up. Ay. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, <laughs> no, no. That's fair. We'll try again. We'll try again. Get more guys to run down, I think, is our is our step there. Sorry, brother, but I'm muting you so I can listen to John and John. Oh, my controller got unplugged. Uh, absolutely no disrespect. You might not even be able to hear me. We're very we're very lucky as Canucks fans to have uh, to have two of the better announcers in the league for sure. Anytime I'm forced to watch an away game, I'm like, man, we are very lucky. John Tron and John Stamos, yes. I don't know if we have the best announcers. Because I think, like, there's always, like, homerism, right? And I'll tell you, like, the Leafs, they have a good announcer. You know why? Because they poached Jim Hewson from Vancouver. But, Shorthouse and Garrett are, are very good. Pierre is a bad announcer. He's not an, Pierre's not an announcer. He's a between the benches color commentator. Betwixt the benches. <laughs> They've all fallen! Quick heal. He didn't fall. There's only a few announcers I don't... Like, I, I have muted the game rather than listening to the away announcers a couple of times. And I, look, okay, no, I'm not specifically saying Boston because um, I, I think that, I forget, what's it, is Doc something, right? Doc Emmerich? I think Doc Emmerich has a great voice and cadence, but he is a huge homer. But like, I think it's okay. Like if you, uh, you, you can be a, a homer. At, at, people are always like, announcers should be impartial. I'm like, I don't, it doesn't bother me at all, to be honest. Um, the Florida Panthers announcers, though, in my opinion, are just, uh, ignorant. Like, in the, in the Sedin's last season, they called Henrik and Daniel Sedin some of the dirtiest players in the league, and then just had a really bizarre comment about, like, I'm surprised he can, uh, like, throw a punch when his... He's been licking peanut butter off of his fingers. And everybody was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I don't even understand what the... What it's supposed to mean. He did issue an apology. Yeah, he called him a low life. They're like two of the classiest players in the... Oh, come on. That's not a good start. Failed to parry. He did issue an apology, but I think it's... Uh, I think it's hilarious that he had to issue an apology for something he said during a... a hockey broadcast. So this is, just for the record, people who are like, use the halberd 
and then switch when Gwyn shows up. Uh, you saw how fast Gwyn attacked us. That's why I choose not to do that. Because I don't think there's enough time. And we'll, we'll take on so much equip load just to have them like ready for hot swap. We could switch the bonfire. I guess we could switch before the door as well, but I mean, to be honest, I'd really prefer to just not attack anything up here to begin with. I think that's the, that's the way forward. Just do the thing where you die on the parish stairs. <laughs> and then quit and reload the game and you phase through Sen's Fortress. Now we're talking. Okay. Get the Seistus ready to go. Face me. Spam. We were spamming. Look, can I tell you something? Already, beating the stray demon was poggers. Beating the gargoyle was a mini pog, just a little, a little pog. Beating the uh, sanctuary guardian was big pog. S spam this grin to help our streamer win. Like we had to, we had to come up with a game plan and execute it. I believe we can. Beat Gwyn and Ornstein. Now, I believe it'll take some time to get there. There's two butchers. Jesus, I could never be a streamer. This level of trolling would make my piss boil. I'm not going to say I haven't had a few hot pisses in my day. Let's go! You know what we should do at the top? Put on some armor. Being able to have two, uh, to be able to take two hits, I think, would be ideal. <clears throat> yeah, we need Havels. <laughs> we could try to trick him into falling off the edge, too. Let me in, let me in. I'll take it. Honestly, yes. Part, probably the most annoying part of streaming is dealing with ignorance and, like, not trolling in chat, because, you know, it's not my first day on the internet, but, like, just people who have spent so much time online that the only way they know how to interact with people is by trying to start an argument all the time. Um, which is why I talk about, like, Whenever we do, like, inside baseball stuff, I always talk about how to, like... It's so important to recognize, like, what criticism is valid and what criticism is invalid. And, you know, sometimes valid criticism... Criticism? <clears throat> he said the word wrong. Comes from somebody that you should ignore, as much as I hate to say it. Like... That's why, like, anytime there's a... And hold on. He's got to focus. Anytime- oh, I didn't put on armor. Like I said, I gotta focus. Hold on. Try me. We were close on that one. We were- we were getting in there, we were hanging there. But, um... 
I, I, I've said this verbatim like 20 times, but sometimes someone will write something on uh, like the subreddit that rankles me a little bit, and then I will click on their username and see that there's, you know, every day they're posting like 12 comments that are part of an argument on various different subreddits, and I just go, yeah, okay. This is a person I should just ignore, to be honest. They, their whole online existence, for whatever reason, is centered around starting arguments. So your, your criticism, as much as I hate to say it, is, is it falls on deaf ears because you criticize everything. Let me in. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> then we just need a non-humanoid creature. Yo, he's gonna shoot. Ah, oh, crap. Dude, we don't have time to put on armor. Maybe we can maybe get on one piece. Let's go! <laughs> Coward. Still killed me in two hits, but... Alright, so I got a new plan. I know we're running out of time here. Parry? When he's on the ground? Run to the other side and try to bait the jump attack over and over. I honestly, the angle of the roof, I think, is messing me up. I know it's going to activate Ornstein at some point, though. And before you ask, by the way, before you ask, you cannot kill Ornstein by just trying to, like, smash attack the Christ out of him. While he's, uh, not activated yet. He has to be activated to take damage. Please move slightly. Wow, you are really dumb. For real. Let me in. I'm doing it. I'm not doing it. The jumps. <laughs> anyway. That's the... I mean, that's the hardest part of streaming, and it's still not really that hard. It just takes some getting used to. Like, when you see a comment in chat, and you're like, Wow, that comment's really rude. And then you recognize the username that it's written by, uh, and you go, Oh, it's just that guy. I'm not going to take it too seriously. But I'm also not going to time him out because he's a subscriber. So really, I'm living my best life. Please tell me the demon fell. He didn't say horny. He's not calling me out. For once, I'm not calling out Morgan. That's correct. It's that combined with the fact that if you uh, ever clap back, it's seen as punching down. Which is like the only thing stopping me from destroying many of you on a, on a bi-weekly basis. Because I have a superior wit. That... That was the, uh, that was the pitched roof. I need to, I need to fight him on a flat surface, dude. (laughs) 
I can... We got like eight minutes. I can lure him into jumping off. You can't destroy me any better than you can destroy Gwyn. Good one. You steal it from Mike Huckabee's Twitter account? You got the whole squad laughing. No, not the corner! Gwyn cannot fall. Oh no! I'm getting two enormous blue collar workers completely destroy West Coast Liberal. NSFW. That's me in the corner. That's me on the Gwyn fight. Perry on an angle. Trying the cheese for you. The geometry won't let me do it. Oh no, my ass, this is done. Still having fun. No. No, no, no! Yo, yo, yo! REM has one good song. Wrong. They have a few. Not again. But. They phase through the wall, just go! REM has like. A decade of very, very good. Alt rock and college rock music, followed by like 15 of the most boring years of music ever created. Name 20 songs if they're so good. So, out of respect, I'm uh, not going to, but I could definitely name at least half of the tracks on uh, Murmur and probably all of them on Automatic for the People. And then many of the singles over the course of the ensuing, or the intervening period. Incredible. Something's happening here. You just gotta fight him on the exact... Oh no! On the exact midpoint of the roof. That's bad. We got so lucky with that parry window, dude. <sighs> Did he really hit Ornstein? Yo, Mouth and Apollo, give me a moment, please. <laughs> it's very simple. It's a Gwyn sandwich. You get the first third of Gwyn complete. He spawns Ornstein, you strip off all of your armor, and just roll like a midman. Let Gwyn take out Ornstein via collateral damage, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Then killed the rest of Gwyn. Oh, he even got past the deli man. The first parry is not the most important parry. The second parry is the most important. 
The first one is automatic. And I'm not even worried about the jinx. Get ready. Told you. It's all about the second parry. Come on. Come on. Dude, this is a great place to fight him. He misses. Because I'm such a manlet. Roll! No! No! I lived. I think we got a parry and then heal. Let me. Malvin Apollo, let me get at least one more. I mean, if we had healed, we would have been killed, to be honest. No, there's no Dan today. But it's okay, we're 100 seconds away from the start of Unity and we have no idea what we're playing. Anyway, REM's bangers. They got a lot. I mean, Radio Free Europe, talk about the passion. Man on the Moon, Everybody Hurts, Losing My Religion, Shiny Happy People, It's the End of the World as We Know It, Night Swimming, What's the Frequency Kenneth, Orange Crush, Stand. They got like, there's a, there's a staggering amount of bangers. Also, a lot of garbage. Like Leaving New York, not a good song. They're really just a bad era. Deserve. Shiny happy people is trash. Uh, it's not trash because it has the lady from the B-52s in it. It's got it's got an an incredible jingle jangle chorus. Hey, hey! Is it? It's got some great stuff. And if you don't believe that, then you are truly lost. Heal. Wrong. Yo, yo, he's confused. He's moonwalking. Oh no, he saw me. I was spamming. What? Why are you attacking? I hit the button like ten times. No stam. No stam. Face me. He's coming! Pop it! Strip and run. <laughs> what do you mean? Someone said he doesn't do that much damage to Ornstein. Did you see that? He smacked him, took off like 15% of his HP. Okay, for real? It's not like one more attempt, Mouth and Apollo, but it's one more fog wall attempt. If I don't make it through the, the fog wall, it doesn't count. But if I make it through the fog wall, even if I miss parry one, that's life. It crashed. That does not count as a good one. Yeah, that's that's your mom turning off the breaker to your room when she's sick of you playing Call of Duty all night. That happened to me once. I don't know if I've ever told this story, but like one summer vacation, it must have been between 
11th and 12th grade. I never had a summer job until college. Don't at me. So I would just spend like every night on summer vacation. I would stay up until like uh, like 3 a.m. playing Halo 2 on voice chat. And then whoop, one day I woke up at like, you know, noon <laughs> and my Xbox was gone. So I called my mom and I was like, somebody stole my Xbox. And then she was like, no, your dad and I took it away because you were too loud last night playing your video games. And I was like, I was mad. As a 31 year old, I'm like, yo, she should have taken it away that night instead of waiting. It, that taught me a valuable lesson. It's true. You were 31 when this happened? Do you, do you remember what I said? Oh, maybe... Less than 20 minutes ago about bad faith arguments and... Low effort trolling. No, not surprising. Should have remembered who I'm talking to. That was high effort? If you think that's high effort, that explains a lot. Explains a lot of the posts I see on social media. A lot of the opinions I see on Reddit. <laughs> a lot of the hands I shake at PAX. It's all coming clear now. I'm... We're gonna do... Let me in! He let me in. Idiot. Don't jump! We're gonna do Tutty. I just had to make it to the fog wall. This is the final run. Don't you say Unity's gonna start on toxic footing, Robert Meowney Jr. Simvicta told me to watch out for you. He said, watch out for this guy. Send him. Now back up. No! All right. It's tutty time. Hello. 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 Nice try. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> there was some good stuff going on.